That's a long one. <laughs> the, the anticipation. Suspense. <laughs> Makes the hot girl find it. That's right. That's right. Well, today, as we just told you, we're going to uh, jump into some buy, sell, hold. We're going to start with Aaron Jones. Mr. How, Aaron Jones? How do, you guys, how do you guys feel about that? Mr. Aaron Jones? Jay Wayne, uh, let's let's start the bidding off, and uh, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> start the bidding at one. <laughs> right, Red. I don't think there's any need to say a two here because I think anybody would give up a two for yeah, Aaron Jones day, yeah. right now. I don't know, maybe Big Code wouldn't two. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. That's a, just a precursor to what's what's to come here. So. Just in, in terms of draft picks next year for Aaron Jones right now, obviously Ty Montgomery got traded and part of this trade talk again that we're going to do on Patreon. So now Aaron Jones is a little bit more freed up. Are you Were you into paying a first round before the trade and now does it intrigue you more like Poppy on Highly Questionable? Are you, see, see, it's very intriguing. <laughs> very intriguing. <laughs> Uh man, I wish I had something funny to say like he does. He crushes. He's it. awesome. Man, he's so so good. good. Uh, it's the best idea they ever had. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I would have given up a first uh, before the so Ty Montgomery. The Ty Montgomery trade. move makes moves that much earth for you to say that I, I feel just so much better. Just that there's a two headed monster here now. Maybe not even the monster, like a two headed like mid level <laughs> boss. Right. Right. <laughs> Well, it's, it's a video just, game reference. Overall, the hype is. <laughs> what was that mid-level boss? boss from, what was that from? The, uh, I mean, just a lot of lot of things had mid-level boss. bosses. Yeah. That you got to beat. San yeah. Andreas, the um, sure or well, we play a little Zelda Turtles I mean, in Time. Sh- right. Super Nintendo, they'd have a mid-level boss. wasn't qu- You weren't quite ready for Bebop and <laughs> right. Rocksteady, but <laughs> or Shredder. Or, uh, yeah. or, what was that game? What was the San Andreas? What was the name of the game? Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. That's it. The mid level. Mid level boss. Yeah. That yeah. game is what's wrong with America. But anyway. Whoa, the, whoa, whoa! I won't disagree. Um. So the, the Grape to me, Street all day, though. No? To me, it's been a conglomerate of things for Aaron Jones. The hype has just been building, and it's been on an exponential curve. Yeah. Upward. There's been a, lo- a ton of just everyone just loves this guy. Right. So we've much. gotten questions on Patreon. Should I sell? Should I buy Aaron Jones for a first? And this was like before he had really done much at all this season. Like I'm and I had to go back and check box scores to make sure I didn't miss something like did Aaron Jones just f- just bust out and I, and I missed it. But and this was before lot, this past week. Much like a lot of these guys we're going to talk about. There's a big circle of people who like this player already further expediting the price tag right so i and mean now no time montgomery you're into the first I, I think so i mean he's a running back and he's 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 he looks great on the field he looks great when you throw it to him or where the when you hand it off to him now looking at some of the numbers he's facing boxes on an average have six and a half guys in the box because it's aaron Rodgers' offense mm-hmm. and this so, would be the plus side of the absolutely packers offense here there is a there is a Downside, but the, the right. plus side is is that it should be easy sledding, much like you saw uh, the run for Aaron Jones this week. I'm not saying that he isn't talented and didn't have a have a nice run on his scamper this week to get in the end zone, but once he got into that middle of the field, there wasn't anybody around, right? And he was gone, right? Which is is what's going to happen, right? And and I did he dropped a ball, a big a big drop. He his hands to me aren't my favorite, but they're not the worst, right? He's he not Ty Montgomery. Didn't have a ton of catches in college, but 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 did okay. Uh, I just it's so hard to get a running back, and if it's been up and down whether the running back for Aaron Rodgers is a guy you want or don't want, you know, for a while Eddie Lacy was hot. Now he's obviously fell off big time. Uh, no, no longer to be found. I, I don't know. I, I love the talent. I really like Jamal Williams, which is why I've always been kind of hesitant on Aaron Jones. I've always been you're more in the minority, intrigued. right? But I, I think I was Jamal Williams is a very solid player. I don't think that there there's a crazy gap in between the two, which has been somewhat of my reservation. They're different, but I think both of them are are pretty good players. Aaron Jones probably has more uh, upside of of big plays and, and the spark such. score is a little higher, I guess, and. The spark score is higher. If you look at the snap counts over like the last three weeks, everything has been trending in Aaron Jones's direction. Sure. And so he played, I think, 33 out of 52 snaps last week. And I don't know if those are exact numbers, but it's a it's a pretty Ballpark, close. Pretty close. And 
It, so if you give Definitely me the guy, standing up double, if he's going to be getting that many snaps and he's going to be getting this many carries, and they just got rid of one of the three heads of this lower level boss group here, <laughs> then mid level, I'm I got to be in. Give me a running back for a first round pick. Absolutely, I I don't. I'm not that excited about this upcoming class of running backs. You don't know where. You, what you might be able to do with that first round pick. I mean, no one studies rookies more than we do. And when I it's don't, time. When, when it's time. time, right? We're not, we haven't been doing that for next year's class just yet. But if you guys like, could pay me enough that it was my job, I'd be able to tell you about these rookies right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I got things to do. $5 holla. Not Patreon.com. Uh, but well, before I kick it to Big Co here, let's, if it, Jamal Williams, where are you staying on that if we put it pick wise? Because I don't think anybody's nearly given up what they would give up to to give Aaron Jones to get Aaron Jones right now. So let, we'll start with the six, the the second with Jamal Williams. Would you give up a second to get Jamal Williams? Because nobody's giving up a first right now to get Jamal Williams. No, you can't give up the first. I, I don't think I'd give up the second. I mean, mm. no. Why would you give up a second for Jamal Williams? Don't shoot the messenger here. I'm asking <laughs> the questions. The re- one of the things that, that that but why wouldn't you? This that, could easily be you're saying it's been trending towards Aaron Jones these last couple of weeks. This next week, you could be like, what the hell happened to Aaron Jones? It's been the Jamal Williams with the higher snap. You know, there's just really no rhyme or reason for anything. I don't think Jamal Williams is like is is a terrible player. I think he's a good player. Well, I mean, did you were you ready well, to go somewhere before he changed the three well, Jamal I, Williams? I, I just wanted to see where you stood on him because I know that you've been a Jamal Williams guy. We I haven't am. been. Jamal Williams haters by any means. He just hasn't done anything for you at all this year. And you thought he, there was a hype. The coaches tried to talk him up. They were like, Jamal Williams is about to have a career year. That's what right. McCarthy came out and said. And you're like, oh, shit. And you won that guy on your team, I guess, at that point. And he just hasn't done anything for you. He's been trending in the opposite direction. On top of that, you got Aaron Jones, who's like a folk hero. Like people love Aaron Jones. People mm-hmm. want Aaron and, Jones and to people, be good. People the second Aaron already Jones didn't good. like Jamal Williams. They right. were just he's garbage. So so just the name cachet alone for Aaron Jones to me is worth grabbing him for a first because if he comes out the next couple of weeks and is the guy, he's gonna be worth more than that. And there's a chance that yeah, maybe Jamal Williams comes in here. He's a better pass protector, which I was kind of stunned at the solid grade that PFF had given Aaron Jones, but he's only they don't ask these running backs to pass protect basically at all. They're always like running routes. There's very little pass protection snaps even accounted for when you look at the numbers on pro football focus. So Which I don't always agree with the grades on that's, there. That's but. fair too, but I mean the the number of pass protection snaps is probably fairly accurate mm-hmm. where they actually were asked to stay in and, and block. Uh so I I'd give up a third, I guess. And and maybe you should give up a second. I just don't think I can do it right now. So, would you say you were wrong on Jamal Williams? I, I, I mean, I don't know that I ever came out and pounded the table for Jamal Williams. We, I said we, that we we've got some strong Jamal Williams cases we, out there. We have, we have. I think he's looked pretty pretty solid at times. And so, yeah, maybe I've been wrong. Maybe I've probably come on here and said I would give up a two or something to get him, and that that hasn't paid off at all for me. I, I think, don't think I've ever gone and said I needed to I give up a first to get Jamal him. Jamal Williams needs the bell cow role to be as good as he could be and Aaron Jones is not that's I can agree with that I think the uh, big co same question uh well I think a couple weeks ago start, let's start with eliminate Jamal Williams we'll start with Aaron Jones well they're they, they're inverse root we'll inver- the, they're inversely the, both, related the way this team I want to give you the opportunity to answer the question of with the first for the, Aaron Jones a couple weeks ago Aaron Rodgers came out and said we need to get Aaron Aaron Jones the ball more and if, you know, Jay Wayne's getting some snap counts for us and, you know, three weeks in a row, Aaron Jones' snap counts are rising and the other two players are, they defensive. have to be going down because of the way this team, you know, they're, they're a pass first offense. They got Aaron Rodgers. They don't line it up and I form and pound it all the way down the field. That's not how they roll. They're not Seattle. So if they ha- it has to be an inverse relationship and it's been hurting Jamal Williams. And I would agree with the way you put that. Jamal Williams is kind of like a Jordan Howard kind of guy. He he needs that. Pr- he needs the 20 carries and he can get you that 100 yards if you give it to him. But and if, but Aaron Jones, and you've seen him in roles with I don't, I, uh, his backup quarterback last year where he did get that. And abs- he was a pretty good player. Absolutely. Last year when Aaron Rodgers got hurt, Jamal Williams was crushing it. And if you say he wasn't, then you're not watching TV. And if you say right now that Aaron Jones doesn't look like a more electric running back than Jamal Jamal Williams, you're not watching TV. Like you're not watching the games if you don't think Aaron Jones looks better than Jamal Williams. And if you 
won't concede that Jamal Williams played really, really good last year, then I don't want to talk to you either. You I know mean, what there's I mean? Some, there's some so, yards per carry that would suggest that he wasn't great and some attempts and didn't turn out to be these great games. Oh, but, but I you could judge say my, yeah. Aaron Jones' pass catch and, and yards and catches last year don't even come close to what Jamal Williams did. Yeah. Like, so Jamal, I, don't, I don't equate everything know? to that, but what I saw on the field from Jamal Williams, out, sometimes – Everyone says stats, numbers don't lie, stats don't lie. They lie. When you're watching the game flow and what the player was doing for the team, I think Jamal Williams was an important cog in that wheel and was playing well for them last year. Aaron Jones obviously wasn't 100%. around her and doing other things and, and you know, whatever. But anyway. Go. So the thing about it for me is Jay Wayne brought this up before we got going today when we were kind of chatting about this before we started. And he reminded me of that Dallas Cowboys game last year about um, Aaron Jones and Aaron Jones looked like he was ready to take the league by storm last year against the Cowboys. And he just looked ridiculous last year in that game. And I don't, between that game and the end of the year, somehow, some way, the coaches decided it was Jamal Williams' turn. And between, you know, and, and yeah, from week 10 to week 17, Jamal Williams had seven out of eight games, 15 or more carries. Right. And it's just like, so I can't control, I, I have to play my fantasy team. Like what I, there is a cis dynasty and you do, I understand you can latch on to a guy early and hang on to him and ride the ups and the downs and stuff like that. But my problem with Aaron Jones earlier in the, in the season coming off of last year was the fact that they've done nothing but show me that Jamal Williams is the guy, but then a couple, obviously Aaron Jones goes and gets suspended. So that took care of that. You throw in now that, you know, I like a good weed guy though. He's got, he's got out a good weed guy. He's out. Team. But so now Tom Montgomery leaves. But the problem with that is, is he had, you know, two carries last week, four carries a week before that, four carries. He's never had more than five carries all year and more and, and only had he had two catches or less ever since week one. You know, in the first two weeks, obviously, Aaron Jones wasn't there. So Tom Montgomery has been basically an afterthought on this offense, even with Randall Cobb hurt, which has obviously blown my mind because I was calling Tom Montgomery like a, you know, a cheat code Swiss Army PPR point guy because as soon as a running back got hurt, he was going to be playing running back. And when it wasn't if, but it was basically when Randall Cobb got hurt, Tom Montgomery would be yeah. in there doing that. And Montgomery and, had times last year where he was doing his thing and looked really really good oh don't forget but tom montgomery was baby david johnson to start the year last right. year I, I didn't forget that it's just he wasn't doing anything this year so i don't think him leaving necessarily catapults aaron jones farther that much farther up the list for me the problem and i know this isn't fair but you take away aaron jones's 33 yard touchdown and obviously the rest of that drive still gets completed in one way shape or another but you're talking about 11 carries for 50 yards before that 30 yard touchdown mm -hmm. and no and two catches for no yard like he still hasn't had more than two catches all year well, and everyone wants to quickly point to that he's averaging 6.7 yards a carry and jamal williams's career average is this and that and it's which is i, I get it to a point but like stats lie I'm, I'm sorry but they do well there's a difference when when jamal williams is in the game the defense is like if he gets the ball he's going to be this kind of runner right and the and and situationally Jamal Williams might be in there trying to get a third and one carry. So right. you're talking about yards per carry. That just it's it's not as tr it's not a great stat because he might have been getting a carry from the two. The best he could do was two yards, mm -hmm. you know. Versus Aaron Jones gets one for 33. Obviously, he looks great, but he does have a higher than five yards per carry average in every single game that he's played, which is you know good. He he's electric. I'm not trying to take anything away. Aaron Jones, the player. If you put Aaron Jones on the Rams right now and Todd Gurley gets traded, I would love Aaron Jones. It's just my problem with Aaron Jones is Aaron Rodgers and the fact that he, if it's not Jordy Nelson, it's not Randall Cobb. Now it's, uh, it's a big tight end. Uh, you know, it's um, Jimmy Graham. Devontae Adams is a stud. They got a couple of rookie running, but rookie wide receivers running around. And they, they just, the same problem that we had with the rookie, with the running backs last year for the Packers still exist. They just don't hand it off that much. He's not getting it stuck in his gut. Well, yeah, can, he, you know, can he be a really good serviceable RB two for sure? But I'm not in a hurry to pay a first round pick for Aaron Jones. Yeah, I mean, when you the the downside of the Packers running backs, as we alluded to yeah. in the beginning, is of this Aaron Rodgers, and the upside well, is the Aaron Rodgers, right? Is is that you're facing <laughs> lighter boxes for the most part, and sometimes you know on third and ones, like you mentioned, maybe whoever's in there and they they're just trying to get that one yard on a on a pound it kind of deal in the box is a little bit more stacked but i know i don't know what the the number is this year or last year but i know when we were when i was saying that i didn't want anything to do with ty montgomery 
last year, my you know, it was just because he was Crunching a fourth round startup. Pick. Well, yeah, well, yeah, but also the fact that like from the forty moving into the red zone, yes, the the Packers just didn't hand the ball off. No. And in order for your running back to score the touchdowns, which is what you're inevitably wanting, unless he's just going to catch a ridiculous amount of balls, right? Um, it was going to be really hard. Um, and I, I don't know how much that's changed, but I don't think it's changed a ton with Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, last year, if you look at it, it probably changed because Aaron well, Rodgers wasn't hurt. out there. Good point. But the, the downside and the upside are, are, like you said, are Aaron Rodgers. You could run against a lighter front, and sometimes it's going to work out, and you're going to bust him off, or somebody's going to grab you by the foot when before you get five yards down the field and tackle you, and it's not going to be the same run that you just had for however 33 yards against the Rams. Yeah. Um, and it is the fact that the that the Packers just don't necessarily hand it off a ton in the red zone and don't really hand it off really inside the 20 too much. And maybe I'm wrong right now. Maybe their stats proving me wrong. But I know two years ago that that was just what they were doing. I can't imagine it's too much different because the running game hasn't changed that yeah. much. You know, the amount of attempts and, and the amount that they do run the ball. There was a game where Aaron Jones, I, I forget which one it was, uh, got him all the way down to the one yard line on a big long run. They gave him the same him the ball. That, that was the same frame game. Right. And they gave him the ball on the very next play and he got stuffed and then he they did, didn't they do gave it him again. one shot right. and that was it. But mm-hmm. they did give him one shot. That's, that's, that's You might get one shot. All right. So would you give up a first round pick for Aaron Jones right now? I mean, I guess if I was 8 0. And the way it, you know, if I was 8-0 and I had been one of our Patreon members is 8-0 at the moment, and he said, "Can I? would I give up a second-round pick for Jalen Rashard because all I got is Tevin Coleman and Dalvin Cook's hurt? I mean, I'm 8-0 because I've got Patrick Mahomes and a good wide, bunch of good wide receivers. Maybe I'd give up that guaranteed playoff berth draft pick. Like, worst-case scenario, you're that's 1-9, 1-10, 111 like that, and then you think maybe Aaron Jones helps you win a championship, I guess. But I'm not. I'd rather not. And if I could get a a first rounder from somebody who's not eight and zero, and it looks like I got a shot of it of it making making being a, a decent draft pick, it I don't have to doesn't have to be the one one doesn't have to be the worst team in the league. But if I got a middling team and I got a shot at the one five one six one seven type pick, I would take that for Aaron Jones. If I I mean nobody can afford to trade a running back. That's let's be honest, it's twenty eighteen. But you can't if afford there was, to get rid of a running back. If there was one that you could afford to trade, it'd probably be him because he really hasn't, hasn't been, been leaning on him. You haven't haven't been, been. He hasn't he was out of your lineup for two weeks and then he probably hasn't been really in your lineup for the last couple of weeks just trying to figure it out. So if there was an expendable one, it would be him, I think. It um, could be I mean obviously you could be sitting there just trying to tread water and Aaron Jones could come through here being the you know, night and shining armor, but let's just last week, Aaron Jones is just doing his thing. Jamal Williams steals the short touchdown and Aaron Jones busts off the 30 yarder. But again, if he doesn't get that, he's got you nine point eight points, you know, like I don't want to give up the first round pick for the 10 or 12 point guy. You know, it's like, that's, I, that's just not what I want to go after. What I, I mean, obviously you said it, you know, would you give a two? And I said, yeah, like no doubt. Like there's, the a, a second round pick has plenty of value, but like that first round pick has it just sparkles in people's eyes. Like I'm not, I I, I can do something with that. Yeah, well, I could see I could see a scenario where I would I would trade Aaron Jones for a first, but I, I could also definitely see a scenario where I give up. The well, first like Casey's Aaron saying, Jones. if if you're feeling good about your if you're if you're not winning, then you probably don't need to give up that first for Aaron Jones because you're about to have a good pick. And if you are winning and you you're you haven't been, you, if you're winning, it's not because of Aaron Jones. So Casey's right about that. If you're winning and you're doing really good and all of a sudden Aaron Jones is coming to life on your bench, then obviously you're excited about it and you probably don't need him anyway because you've been winning. Every once in a while you can be winning with, but you know. Well, it's basically like. Maybe you had Gio Bernard plugged in for a couple weeks and then maybe you had Latavius Murray plugged yeah. in for a couple weeks. It's we're, just like. Well, we're going to talk about Marlon Mack and, and Philip Lindsay and, and Cohen here and, and on the rest of this podcast. And it's really like all of those guys. You've missed your window of opportunity to be able to purchase them for probably even a lower end first right now. Like you're not getting, I don't think you're not getting any of those guys for a lower end first, maybe Lindsay for, for whatever and reason, Aaron but, Jones too. I would, but, but all, I yeah, would so we're still on Aaron Jones okay. right now. That's what I'm talking about. Like you're not getting Mac. No, you're probably not getting Cohen and most probably likely not. you're not going to get Lindsay. We're going to address all these guys and, and whether we, we are or are not doing yeah. that. But like, are you willing to miss the window, right? Because you're saying, oh, well, I'm not trading him for this eight to ten point guy. But if he's going to be a guy who's maybe 
shifting into the front runner of this offense, he could easily be a guy who's getting a few more touches a game and leading the offense, curbing your floor and giving you upside I in this that, offense. I see, there's no doubt he prov- he provides I would say a ceiling is, and an upside, but he's not going to be your goal line back. First of all, Aaron Rodgers. How do you Rodgers, know that though? Because you got Jamal Williams, and he he's not there. I'm I'm, they, I'm I'm making an. I don't know that. Okay, let's say I'm, not, at, I'm just making an educated. And I, guess. I I'm telling like I I'm like Jamal an, Williams as much as the next guy. Aaron guy. Jones and Jamal Williams. I'm going to double check this year, but have the same exact amount of red zone touches and it's got to be a very small amount it it is that's what i'm saying uh, and, and you're splitting it maybe okay, you're not so splitting it between the 20s jamal williams has seven aaron jones has five aaron jones has two less games. he missed a couple games yeah so all right that's my point is even if aaron jones gets more work between the What's, 20s jamal williams is probably the goal line back if it's not aaron aaron rogers throwing it and again like we said the same aaron what's, aaron rogers what's Tariq is, cohen's 20 between the 20s uh red zone touches what, what what's even like what's but christian, Cohen's what's christian McCaffrey? right no no i understand that and, and aaron why jones, can't, aaron jones can't get a couple why can't he or what, there was he there was a point in time where ty montgomery in the beginning of last season was making me look dumb because he was getting some quick check downs he was a former wide receiver sure but i mean uh, there it it could easily s- slide that way if they see if aaron Rodgers starts seeing hey Aaron Jones is in here a little bit more. If I check it down to him, we've been getting some explosive plays from him. Co- yes. Ooh-hoo-hoo. Cohen has 10 red zone touches, and Lindsey has 17. Ooh. All right. They could, them boys hand it to him for sure. Ooh. They hand it to him. Well, the, like that's my – exactly. Like, he could – the Aaron Rodgers effect. If well, why Aaron you Jones want, why you want Aaron Jones? Dog. Why you want Aaron Jones running back is uh, Aaron Aaron Rodgers running back is because the, they have to they have to defend the entire field. Right. So like yes, if he spreads them out and checks it down to him a couple times, he probably could run with it for a minute, and that's great. But he just they haven't been doing that, and they haven't been throwing it to. And, and Jamal Williams can catch too. So it it would be very surprising if Jamal Williams went down to basically zero usage. He's already flip-flopped him, and he's basically Aaron Jones in the last couple of weeks has been working his way to 60-30 or, you know, 70-30, 60-40, take out, you know, Tom Montgomery, and, and so you don't have another third guy in there, even though it's been a very minimal even though piece. But even though to, yeah, you made that point earlier, even though you're saying that, you know, Tom Montgomery hasn't been getting a ton of usage, but th- there's been some decent snaps for Tom Montgomery just maybe but not they, getting the usage, but they've totally. I mean, maybe it's not perfect, and it's not. They didn't bring in a bunch of first round picks, but they totally reloaded their wide receiver core. Sure. When Tom Montgomery was catching all those passes, they really yeah, only no, no, no. they, they were just, out of receivers too. I'm just saying right now, Other, even Devonte Adams was hurt and it, this year. Like Ty Montgomery was at some point getting twenty to to twenty nine snaps snaps on the field. Okay, so. It, Regardless of whether what, he got whether, a target what, what or a rush, he was doing on there, it's just another. Whether he got a target or a rush, he was still it, on the if field. If you split it evenly, there's there's gonna be you know twelve a piece, and right now it doesn't look like it's being split evenly. So it could be another eighteen and I don't you know nine or whatever for um, Jamal Williams. Well, it, they have a superstar wide receiver who demands targets and touchdowns, and he's a red zone monster. He might have the most touchdowns in the last three years out of all receivers. Some crazy stat like yeah. that. Devontae Adams is an absolute monster, so he takes red. That's that's my point about the whole inside the five, inside the ten. Like Sometimes the Packers don't even get there from 12 yards sure, out, no, 15, no, 20 yards out. It's Devontae they Adams. They didn't get there with Aaron Jones. 33-yard rushing touchdown. Right. And that's the thing about Aaron Jones is he can bust long ones off. He can. Which, yeah. is, which is, again... Solid speed with an amazing burst. To my like, point of saying that I think Jamal Williams is more of the bell cow and this is a more of electric guy, so I think the more opportunities you can put him on the field to do some of these electric things... I get it. I'm a little bit... But it's basically I, saying... Are, are you willing, which you're not, you said you probably are, Jay Wayne, uh, are you willing to pay for something that hasn't quite reached even half of its potential value to then probably double again? If 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 Aaron Jones reaches what the potential value is, it's going to double or triple. And, you know, no, I don't think I'm anybody's not saying it's not. I don't think anybody's saying, saying that they're going to give up one one like I'm not going to I'm not going to trade my. Oh, an eight team. I'm not going to trade my pick for Aaron Jones, but you know, if you're anywhere near the middle or lower middle, it's not a terrible idea to. And I, and I think to preface all this, like I think this is the most indecisive of whether or not I would trade a one for the rest of these guys, whether it's yes or no, is Aaron Jones for me? Because I, I, I honestly, I don't. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm 
starting to lean more and more. And now that you did eliminate a little Ty Montgomery, although he isn't wasn't getting the run, like the the opportunity to be out on the field a little bit more with Aaron Rodgers just is more of opportunities to say, hey, nobody's around me. Let me bust one for 30 and, and score a touchdown. And I get I like again, I like Jamal Williams a good bit. I, I've been trying to prop him up some of saying, hey, he's not as bad as everyone's making him out to be. And he's still not. And he's not. He's certainly not. Williams. And there's certainly almost no running back situation where there isn't another guy in the fold. Yeah. And why can't Aaron Jones be a little bit more Tariq Cohen and Jamal Williams be a little bit more? Obviously, they're not running it as much as the Bears are. But why can't you have that dynamic, especially when both of them are going to get a little bit more time on the field? So coming into this before the trade happened i was i was mostly saying no of ty montgomery being traded and the ty montgomery trade makes me feel just a little bit better about maybe giving a lower end to middle level one away i would rather go before i before i gave a first round pick for Aaron jones which i'm not unless i was basically guaranteed a championship anyway it's i would give my, i'd rather give a two for Jalen richard and get that ppr floor every week or maybe even get lucky and get him for two threes and not even have to give up a second round pick because who is Jalen Richard? you know sure. he has he's not a he has no following that's, so I'd, I'd rather take that six for 60 through the air I'd rather put enough. that 12 points that's I'd enough. give up the ceiling but and still keep my first but you're also n- not trading for anything next year like Jalen Richard could be completely irrelevant next year that's true. All right. I'm. A, I have a one lead. And I'm. Where a, I'm. A hunt, I am fine with you saying like, hey, I don't want to give up the one. And if we're looking for running backs, I like giving an example of saying, hey, let me try to get Jalen Richard. I think that's a a great point. He ended up with I don't know 13 or 14 points last week with just getting checkdowns. I think Doug Martin looked good. If you're if we need another cheaper running back, but like, I don't think either one of those guys' future is right. is anywhere near what Aaron Jones could, could be. be. And I get you. Part I, of the I reason while we were off, Mike, you were saying that you didn't like. Uh, Aaron Jones was because of McCarthy and what he does. Now, who knows how much, obviously, Aaron Rodgers doesn't have autonomy like some of these other quarterbacks do, and that's part of the reason why them boys uh, clash with each other. But there's a lot of whispers of McCarthy being even gone after this year, and you know maybe that means there's another running back coming in, or maybe that means the next guy comes in and uses one of these running backs a little bit more heavily installs a system that actually makes people get open and has a more balanced feel much like the Rams, which is where I think you need to live. Yeah, I agree. And Aaron, Aaron Rogers isn't getting any younger. He is 34 going on 35 as he gets older. Maybe he wants to hand the ball off a little bit more. Maybe that's all not the case at all. Uh, but like I got I got Aaron Jones in a, in a team where I'm, I'm about, I'm trying not to get last place. I'm not making the playoffs and it's been a struggle this year and I just traded Mark Ingram and acquired Dalvin Cook in a, in a not not straight up, but uh, you got Aaron Jones on that team. I got Aaron Jones. Oh man, you need to get another, go get you another first round pick. Well, so I could, or maybe I just have just keep Aaron Jones. Maybe, and he comes back next year. Well, he's on. Is, he's got two more years on his left on his deal. This is part of the reason why I wanted to bring up a lot of these guys, uh, especially on this show uh, this week, is because I feel like they're all a little bit similar in the fact of like. They're kind of like they're not mainstays by any means at this point. So they really could be going either way yep. where the career is. They haven't certainly established themselves as being the guy. A couple of weeks ago, they were cheaper. A couple of weeks from now, they could be more expensive or yeah. they could be cheaper. Half of them, three quarters of them, all of them are more expensive than they were a couple of weeks ago. No doubt about uh, it. And they've all gone up in value the last sure. month. And for the, sure. you know, so I, that's part of the reason why I kind of wanted to group all these guys together and talk about them as my microphone falls away <laughs> uh, because I do think like you said do you do you and I think this is a good case for is do you want to hang on to these guys are you confident in what they've been doing and what you've seen from them and or your evaluation or do you think you should be ringing the register on these guys and I and I, I think you're in a in a I think right now I'm going to hold out. I'm going to hold a prime example for this table. I think Big Co is in your situation. He's finding the best pick he could probably find, and he's going to go ahead and move on from Aaron Jones. Next year, Aaron Jones could be part of your starting lineup. Right. right. I could be Dalvin Cook and Aaron Jones and Tevin Coleman, and I'm crushing. All of a sudden, I went from not having any running backs to having an awesome three running backs. Or he could be Tom Montgomery. Sure, and he bubbled out, and then he's he a curious went away. Case of Benjamin Button. He doesn't have sickle cell, so that's that's one plus <laughs> in his non Ty Montgomery. Ty Montgomery has sickle cell. Yeah, I think he does. I think I think we went over this yeah. one time. I'm, no, they really tried to brush it under the rug, but 
He's I think he had it. some sort of auto, whatever that could He's have. got it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I didn't know that. High pitch, really. They couldn't like that. I didn't know. I should have sold, sold Ty Montgomery. Maybe I should sell Aaron Jones right now. Maybe I will. But my, my feeling is that I'm probably going to wait and see how this plays out this season and, and then maybe – Maybe move on, or maybe maybe I'd ride him out. Like unless he blows an Achilles out, I don't I don't think you're gonna lose a tremendous amount of volume. It, like right now, I think you're closer to the one end of things with Aaron Jones. He could definitely kind of regress back to the the two end of things. I, I I think between now and the end of the season, right? I mean, if 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 kind of more along the lines of what Big Coast thinking happens with the, with the Packers, I think he could be kind of more in the two category for for a lot of people at the end of the season. And if he just continues to be kind of where he is right now, I think it'll just be the same narrative of, oh, well, Aaron Jones just needs a little bit more usage and it'll be so good, so I'll still give you the one. Yeah, I agree with that. I I agree. There's a lot more legs for the upside than the downside. He's, but if he's he just takes this thing and very, runs with he's it. He's very capable. I just don't know if there's anything to take and run with. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that, my that's, whole problem that's with why it. I'm, that's why I'm willing to take the one. I don't. It's not the ability. I'm. I don't have a problem with Aaron Jones. I told you last year how much I liked Aaron Jones and his ability. He made NFL people look bad. Like the defenders are paid to tackle him, and they couldn't tackle him. He's good. Yeah. It's just I don't know if there's anything to run with. That's why I'm. That's I'm why I, ta- I need a coach in between change. here because I need well, a and, coach and change. And that from could the happen. And and what the Packers do just makes me offensively makes me not so comfortable. But to again to get back to the argument of. If your evaluation was you like Aaron Jones and you're he's available to get right now and you feel comfortable with him, if it just is a matter of him getting his due, then I think you should pay pay what you think he's worth in that low end first. I think you should do that all day or and or keep your guy and not take that. Right. First See, all right so my problem with that is if you drafted Aaron Jones in the third round or whatever and you're hanging on to him, I got no problem with that. But if you evaluate evaluated Aaron Jones and you liked Aaron Jones. You should have bought him six weeks ago when he was much cheaper. That's my whole in and out on this thing is I just wouldn't I I wouldn't pay enough. And maybe you know and maybe you were trying and with with the two and nobody would give you the two because they felt like they felt the same way about Aaron Jones. And I think an Aaron Jones liker or lover would have been <laughs> trying to press trying to press that button on try I think that you've probably been trying to get Aaron Jones for a little while, but I think now that you see like the first would is definitely going to make somebody think about it, even if you liked him a lot. And yeah, if you believe exactly him, my point, exactly the one's going to make you look at it, no matter who you offer it for, unless he's a top line stud. All right. Well, let's, let's take go a to break. break. Yeah. And we'll be back with more of this, uh, similar fantasy football talk <laughs> for your pleasure. Boom. Nothing like a crack to get you back. <laughs> uh, so welcome back. Here we are. Back on the crack. Brad Keselowski's here, <laughs> as per usual. <laughs> Two for your crew. If you want to hit us up on the Twitters, you can hit us up at, at the FF Dynasty, double added. Uh, Big Co's at Dynasty Bidco, but I don't know if you want to hit him up or not. I don't even know if you can hit Bidco up. <laughs> he might just have everyone blocked. I think I got a total block <laughs> going on. Road's closed. You can find Jay Wayne at Jay Wayne's World. I'm at IMC Myers. Let's get back into uh, some buy, sell, hold. I guess we can call it for lack of a better term. Sure. More of evaluations and seeing where we're at on guys. Well, let's go with Tariq Cohen. We've Tariq. We've uh, alluded that we we wanted to get to some Cohen, the old human joystick here. Certainly that. We'll start off again with Jay Wayne. I think everybody is mostly in agreement here. I mean, first round pick for Cohen. That's not going to do it, is it? I don't. I don't think so. I'd give that up all day. I don't think that's going to get it done. It depends on what first, I sure. think. Again, as you talked about it in the last one with Aaron Jones, and we be a common thread on what we talk about because we like to keep it fresh and funky and realistic. Um, is there a number where you would stop with Cohen? Like one five? Oh yeah, I mean I, we joke about this all the time when people say I got the one five next year. It's like how do you how know? do you know? Well, how obviously you know we're speculating. Yeah. yeah I, um. Well, we had a potential trade and it, uh, it throw it out there today about maybe trying to send a, our first round in one league to f- for Tyler Boyd. And we're not exactly in or out of the playoffs yet. And if you don't make the playoffs, you can play for your first round for the number one one. And it, just in that type of situation, if I didn't know that I if I had a chance at the one one, I don't want to give that away for non said superstar. 
But Tariq Cohen, you're st- we've said it all off season that you'd be chasing that Tariq Tyreek Hill spot in Matt Nagy's offense. And although it was a slow start, Tariq Cohen's looking pretty pretty good in this offense. Right. It's opened up. Uh, Trubisky, while maybe not one of the better quarterbacks in the league, fantasy points don't really care what your you know quality target or not. If you're uh, yeah, they're a, if you're scoring fantasy points, a fickle mistress. Those fantasy points, right? Doesn't even matter. So you're definitely giving up low end one over here, Big Co. I mean, I said I, I I wouldn't give up the one for Aaron Jones because of the system, and I didn't know if he had anything to catch on to and run with. But you look at the targets that my man's getting, and Obviously, last week they were beating up the Jets. They pretty much it was they handled them pretty good. They didn't blow them out, but for that score, it was a lot worse. It was the, essentially a blowout. They it, were twenty four to ten out it, yes. early and often. Exactly. They were they were they were they had it handled and they knew it. But we you got no a Rob. You're for three you're just weeks trying to get out of here with the win. You got up early. Three weeks in a row before clearly the better team. Hey, obvi- sorry, Tariq Cohen obviously had to set this. Clearly the better team. Clearly. Uh, one for one catch, three targets, seventy yards, touchdown speaks for itself. But in the three weeks prior, eight targets, nine targets, thirteen targets, and these, while not behind the line, the scrimmage type targets, still completing at a very high rate. Seven out of the eight targets for a buck twenty one and a touch. Seven for ninety, eight for sixty and a, a touch. A lot of them are pretty close to the line. Like, of scrimmage. fair enough. But this thing, you know, he. This is a this offense has got moving parts in all different directions. Mm-hmm. It's only seven games old. Now with a bye week, we're through week eight, but the Bears already had a bye. Seven games old of Nagy trying to get things working over here with a quarterback who we've said many, many times is limited experience. Played second half of the year last year, only one real season to speak of in college, just getting started. And with the type of passing game work, this is like I said, I'd give up the two for Jalen Richard. This is Jalen Richard on steroids and like you said Jalen Richard basically has no future well and then that's uh, not yeah, necessarily no, not a shot at him but you know what yeah I knew right. what you were meaning and point well taken and you 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 really said it right because Aaron Jones could if he finds something to grab onto and runs with it which I don't know if it's there but if he does like Jay Wayne said if he can grab onto whatever there is and just take it and go with it he has a future much higher than Jalen Richard and I think Tariq Cohen does too it just so happens in the meantime the PPR points speak for themselves. So I would not hesitate to give you that first round pick for Tariq Cohen. If I'm 0-8 and and the worst team in the league gets the first pick, I'm not giving you the 1-1 for Tariq Cohen. But So I don't know if I have a specific answer. If if I'm 0-8, 1-7, 2-6, and 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 I'm battling somebody for that 1-1 or 1-2, I'm going to hang on to my draft pick. But if I'm 4-4 and and Tariq Cohen can fill a void for me and I might make the playoffs – I'll, I'll I'll take the gamble. I'll go with Tree Cohen. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd give up my first. I don't think it would really matter. I I, I don't want to say that I'd give up the 1-1 one, one to get him, but there isn't a 1-1 a one, one right now that's like, oh, my gosh, I can get Saquon Barkley There is no Barkley transcendent next player who has been, like, suck for Saquon or, you know, right. there's no Ezekiel Elliott. There's no, like... <laughs> There's no suck for Saquon. There's no guy who's for sure the franchise changer for your fantasy team like those guys have been and were that first right. year. Like you want David Montgomery or Tariq Cohen, you know? That's basically I, mean, I, I want me personally, I mean, I know there's a lot of I don't I haven't even watched all right. the David Montgomery. I, I haven't even slightly begun the evaluations, but if that ends up being the one one, I would much rather have David Montgomery than Tyreek Hill. It's not even Tariq close. Cohen. Tariq Cohen, sorry. It's not even close for me because I think that that's a bell cow player. Uh, and I don't have to rely on maybe getting these targets and then the, you get these five runs. And if you don't, if you only get three or four targets and you only get six or seven runs and that doesn't equate to anything, then, you know, bummer of a day. But I think Montgomery could be David Montgomery uh, could be a guy who's awesome. And maybe he's not end up being the one one. But as of right now, in my mind, that's who I've painted as being the one one. And Tariq Cohen on 29 other offenses in this NFL doesn't get my first round pick. And that's exactly what that's, that's exactly right. 
Aaron Jones is in a situation where I don't want my first round pick to go to right now without be without it being a suck for Saquon kind of guy. And wouldn't my Nagy Tariq Hey, Tariq Cohen can get my first round pick because it's Nagy. It's one of those. It's a Andy Reid type offense. But if Tariq Cohen was on most other offenses in the NFL, it's going to be a couple of catches, a couple of runs, and maybe a good play or not. Your day's probably you know more bummers than right. not bummers. Maybe Tyreek Hill isn't Tyreek Hill not in an Andy Reid schemed oh. offense. Right, been plenty of fast receivers before Tyreek Hill, but he isn't in a different offense he's in exactly. Matt Nagy's offense Good point. and I mean looking at the usage though it had like yeah the PPR targets prior to last game were pretty solid there's a pretty solid floor although weeks one through three it was three targets one three targets um the the carries have never really been over six one week he had 13 that was kind of an outlier uh but that being said I get it. I get it. Maybe you don't give that top, top, top end first round and pick. If you were just simply watching football and watching Bears games, and uh, we've been a big Jordan Howard advocate, um, and what this offense is doing, there is no question about it that this offense functions more smoothly with the Cohen playing the role that the Cohen plays. Sure. Um, <laughs> but then the in Cohen. the se- but in the second half when they were ready for the Jordan sure. Howard role, and if you just want to go back and watch that, it's not to nothing. say this team can't win with Jordan Howard just being Jordan that's Howard. That's not what and, they want do, to but do. But that's not what they're doing and this offense looks great with Cohen out there doing what he does and the when uh, he does giving it. him enough hand cu- handoffs to keep him honest, honest. Keep him somewhat exactly but what's awesome about this guy and why i want him and why i want him in my lineup is because he's just he's just a he's a spark plug he can sure. he could win your day because he can go off and he could go off multiple times and he could score long touchdowns and he's that that's why i always like to rekill he, before he had that solid five for 50 floor that he kind of has right now right because they're scheming him short and scheming him all over the place he didn't have that off the rip, but he was so intriguing because of just his game breaking right. ability. And you and gotta now, have guys like that right. in your lineup, in my opinion. And now they've surrounded the Chiefs with a ton of talent around Tariq right. Hill, so it's really hard to do. And the Bears are at a similar place right now, albeit with not the quite the high end talent that even quarterback and just the rest of the supporting cast is not what the Chiefs have, but they still do have a nice cast of characters sure they right. do. who all could be very, very good. Uh, moving down the line, so Tyreek Hill is or Tyreek Cohen is very hard to kind of be like. Oh, we're just going to game plan for this guy. And here's another thing too: like the Chiefs were put together before last year, they just blew up last year, and then this year went out with a a next level quarterback, maybe two more levels quarterback. They blew up again, like just like the first year with the Falcons they weren't you know with uh, Shanahan and the Falcons they did start out 5-0 and and things unraveled there were some ups and downs and there was some splashes and then the second year of the system they blew up look at the Rams the Rams were great last year but now they're superior this year you know mm-hmm. like this is the first year first seven games and, and the there's new, multiple there, factors to that but I understand what you're you saying you see what I'm like there yeah but that's what yeah there's multiple factors obviously but we're like yes yeah, so this cast of characters Next year could be the same characters, and we're talking about them in a lot more respect. Yeah, Anthony Miller gets a year older. Allen Robinson, I think, is a very good player. Trey Burton, I think, is an awesome tight end. And a couple of good running backs and a, a young Anthony quarterback and, a, yeah. and, 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 and another year in the system, and you work things out. You know, like, yes, the first three weeks of the season, they were trying to pigeonhole Jordan Howard into this space back, which he caught some balls and take nothing away from Jordan Howard. But And then you see... Tariq Cohen get out here and it stretch everybody's more open when Cohen's right. on the field because you have to respect his speed and his threat and then Taylor Gabriel's fast as hell and Allen Robinson's a r- superior talent wide receiver and you know like there's and you got and now you got Trey Burton running all over the place too like there's it the defense I don't think it's a it was it was the Bucks a couple weeks ago and then. Now and then it was a Dolphins team that might not have been as good as we thought they were, and then they put up 31 on New England, and then they just handled the Jets. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like we respected the Bears the first couple weeks of the season because of the defense, and the defense was scoring all those points, and they did what they did against the Packers, and they barely lost, but they should have won, woulda, coulda, shoulda, blah blah blah. And then you know, obviously they blow up against the Bucks, but yeah, everybody blows up against the Bucks. And then they lost to the Dolphins, but they the offensively they did what they had to do, 
Yeah, you know, it's just they it's should just, not have lost that game. That right, was just right. Fate. They, they got up on Miami. Them. They they just it just one of those things. Yeah, Miami got them fate. early, and then they probably went out of gas wearing black jerseys in Miami, and in the in the summertime heat, it was still in October around here in the southeast, and ran out of gas and got beaten overtime. But then took gave they were up against New England. Yeah, gave New England all they could handle. And then they go and handle the Jets. Like this is an up and coming team, and it's for yeah, it's you know Trubisky makes some really bad plays, but the schemes carry him through, which is what we right. were talking about in the off season. Like Trubisky could be a bad quarterback and still score fantasy points because of everything going on with the offense, and that's exactly what's happened. Not and I didn't even put together with his rushing. I yeah. I, I didn't know that was really going to happen like that. Nobody did. Yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm into I'm with you guys. I'm okay with with selling. Uh, any anywhere to the first uh, mid mid first kind of late first for Cohen all day. I'm not sure if that's going to get it done. You might have to add a little bit of something in order to prime off somebody's team. Slightly concerned just about the way he not not the way he gets used, but his usage and mm-hmm. and and it just seems like it would be easy to kind of for him to get lost in some stuff and not be maybe worth what you're kind of paying for him or having to pay for him right now. Um. But at the same time, it's just kind of like having Aaron Rodgers and having Aaron Rodgers. It's the scheme and the scheme with Tariq Cohen for me. Like, I love the scheme and I love what he's doing. And then again, like this, it could just get spread out a lot and not really feature Tariq Cohen that week. And maybe it's Jordan Howard for three weeks in a row of pounding. And you're like, well, what the hell did I just pay for? And I don't want to come on here and be like, oh, you know, you some, you listen to those shows and you're like, oh, I'd give a third for that guy. Oh, I'd give a third for that guy. Oh, I give, and I don't want to come on here and just be like, oh, we're just giving first for everyone. I mean, but like, basically is, I'd give a first for any of these running backs. Like, I mean, just right. give me a goddamn running back. Please, I just, let me I, get a running back. I just didn't <laughs> want it to be, come on here and be repetitive of these guys are, oh, they're just asking for first for everything. And what would you do? But that that's kind of, these are, again, the lower end of the, the running back pool of the higher kind of middle tier to higher end the guys. mid-level bosses right, right. mid-level bosses is the current theme <laughs> and i think cohen and, and a lot of these mid-level guys boss running back are, are are worth that and again I, the scheme makes me comfortable and uh with with Tariq cohen and then to, to to pile on top of that is the evaluation of the player and what he can do like you said like they, he was the human joystick coming into here out of north carolina a and t or mm-hmm. wherever he came from and you just ridiculous uh, player and everyone wasn't quite sure like yeah he was really good but will he be able to replicate this in in, in the pro level and, and he has five six and like you said the scheme for me is maybe working against you a little bit but it's mostly working in your favor and this is the first couple of games with this scheme so it should continue to grow and you should continue to see expanded roles with what Cohen's doing and how they're using him. And this is a smart guy who's going to be scheming him. He knows the mismatch with him. So yes, as part of me is uncomfortable with what he is and how, how he gets it done because it does seem like it could go away quickly, but I'm also pretty comfortable. Like I know that's completely contradictory of itself, but yeah, well like, yeah, four week last first three weeks, seven points, three points, nine points in PPR, the last four weeks, 30, 25, 22, 18. It, it wasn't there, and uh, now it's there. And I don't know if I would give up much more than the low end first for Cohen. I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to go overpay and, and think this is a guy that is Tyreek Hill necessarily. Um, Maybe not, but he's kind of like Tyreek Hill. You can put in the running back spot. So he's, right. he it's certainly is. Curves. I definitely wouldn't sell him for the low end one. He's not hold, like Tyreek Hill him. on the fact of I'm out there pretty much every single play. Yeah, but I don't know if that um, he probably could be. I'm, I'm not saying that he no in no way, shape, or form am I saying that he couldn't be. Yeah, I mean last year he's coming only into got the, a 46 percent snap share. Last year coming into the season, uh, my boy Sigmund Bloom said he had sources. Sources said them boys in Chicago said Tariq Cohen was not small; he was just short, and I. After first week of the season last year, the old we said this before, but he blew up, and then uh, David Johnson got hurt. Matt Kelly said you're doing it wrong if you didn't take Kerwin Williams and instead of picking up. I put 95 percent of my fab budget on Tariq Cohen in the dynasty league mm-hmm. and wasn't upset about it. No, and obviously last year was da- what Matt Nagy's time and the usage up and down. You didn't yep. want, you weren't I happy just, with Tariq Cohen last year's usage, 
but, but this but year, there was points and times where last year where you were excited about the. I w- I just watched four uh, Tariq Cohen games last year before we even came out here and talked about this to make sure that I was down with Tariq Cohen that I was still in and I was like just with the John Fox system he was still right. absolutely making cats look silly. Yeah, that's what I I I agree with Jay. I think he's he obviously I'm. I'm, I love me some Tyreek Hill too, and I don't want to put anybody on his level, but he's really close to being that. He's what he's getting close to what we were hoping he could be in this system. Matt Nagy came out and said it in the offseason that Tariq Cohen could give him a Tyreek Hill player in this offense. And at the eight targets, the nine targets, the 13 targets before this past week, of course, again, we talked about them handling the Jets. He did your Deshaun Jackson move and only caught one ball, but got you mm-hmm. 18 PPR points because he was 70 in a sure. touch. So if anybody's getting eight, nine, and 13 targets in a row, three-game stretch at a running back position, he's obviously well on the yep. radar. And I don't think this is going it, – it can. there will be weeks where he doesn't get 12 targets. And there will be – and like this week, even if he would have got six or seven targets and maybe only got you 10 or 12 points, you're like, oh, well, I wish I wouldn't have gave my first-round pick for that. That's like I was talking about with Aaron Jones. But Aaron Jones isn't getting eight, nine, and thirteen targets. So I mean, this cat has potential to be a top to score in the top five running backs for, for any week on like twelve touches. Like, right. I got to get that guy which on my is, team. Is which again is just basically why I was saying I'm contradicting myself of saying I like the scheme. The usage and I don't like, with the usage, right? Because <laughs> the it, scheme it with could the usage. Be, it could be so awesome, and then other weeks he could not be forgotten, but be kind of the. Hey, well, there in last, ski- and that happens with any guy. That's not it, a first it, round startup pick. You know? Exactly, that's the problem. But the and first round startup picks are able to get over that. That's they're, why we're they're talking able about to be schemed for and beat the schemed for. I don't know if Cohen's that guy, but I think there's so many parts and pieces, much like the the Chiefs right now, that you can't scheme for all of it. So I agree, and but that's why we're talking about these mid level bosses today in the running back position because if you don't have one of those really good running backs. And you didn't get lucky and draft James White until the end of your draft. Like, what are you even plugging in out there? But give me the talent of Cohen over James White all day long. Yeah, better player. Oh, much uh, as an athlete, they don't right. even they don't right. even stack up. That's what I'm saying. But as but system and head coach and what do you like? So those things go directly and now, together. And obviously, there was nobody there this week, and James White gets does what he does. But as soon as Sony Michelle entered into the fold, James it, White was going. It was oh uh, well, we got a more talented player who does a lot more for our offense. Well, obviously, White with nobody around can still move them around and do what he does. But yeah, Sony he definitely Michelle, took a dip with Sony Michelle. Even when when Edelman came back and Michelle was in there at the same time, it wasn't quite just the James White show. Right. All right. Well, let's take a quick break. Gather our composure. We'll be back with a little Philip Lindsay for your pleasure. All right. That break was fun. Not quite as fun as the breaks last week with all that meatloaf. Just how could it be? How could it be? that midseason meatloaf Ugh. last week. Casey won't let us do it more than we did get it back on the docket yeah, twice. You lobbied. This we is why there's lobbyists in Washington, even though I think that's what's wrong with this country. We got mid off season <laughs> meatloaf. Lobbied. We got mid off season meatloaf. Meanwhile, Jay Wayne was trying to get mid podcast meatloaf every week. <laughs> mid podcast meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't quite happen. Uh, but yeah, we're we're gonna, as you said. <laughs> Boom. There it is. We uh we got this Philip Lindsay discussion is about to get heated. So before things get too crazy in here, I wanted to bring up this Marlon Mack question we got. We got two or three questions this week on Patreon about Marlon Mack. And uh, that community page on Patreon is just popping off, and things are just really exciting over there with Dynasty Trades and should I do this or should I do that? How about this? First-round draft pick over here. This guy offered me two threes for this. I mean, it's crazy and a good time over there. And, we again, a couple questions about Mac. And we want, I wanted to give – anytime there's a just a, hey, you know, this trade is on the table, we try to give some quick feedback to help people out. Um, and then we bring – we put it together on the show for people and, and, and take them to the mics. Um, so Marlon Mack, a sell high question. And I, my direct answer to uh, Riley here was we're going to get into this on the podcast, but wanted to throw my opinion out there now for you, just in case that trade button is burning a hole in your pocket. If you're that kind of person, because I know how it goes. I'm one of those type of people. Um, I said, I can't sell. How, if yeah, you want Big Co's attention, just mention the word trade. You got it undividedly. <laughs> Send me a text or an email about a trade and we are having a conversation. Um, I told Riley, I said, I can't sell high on Mac right now. I said, I'm a high, I'm a sell high kind of guy. That's what I do. 
but we've been waiting on Andrew Lux running back for years now. Looks like we might have found him. By the way, I'd be trying to get Naheen Hines on the chat on the cheap to back him up because Hines looked good too, even as a runner last week. So that again, a couple questions about Marlon Mack on Patreon this week. We're about to get into some. We're going to move up to the Patreon this week because we're a little tight on time. Moving forward, we're going to hit you with the Lindsay, but we wanted to let you know that that's where we're moving it. Well, we tried. We well, we tried not to shortchange you on the right. on the Aaron Jones and the Tariq Cohen. Well, sure, and and the answer you just gave on Marlon Mack, not to throw shade at anybody's show, but that could have easily been the Marlon Mack segment on most other dynasty shows. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Yeah, we don't shortchange it when we're trying to dive. To at least give you the angles. I want to have a conversation, right. and I want you to make the decision at the end of the day. Let right. me give you our thoughts. There you go. And it might take a little while, and maybe you're not upset about that, and you probably don't listen to this show because you just want to, somebody to tell you what to do and then yell at them when they're wrong. But we know that we know how many people listen to this show, right. and, th- and we feel like that those people... And you guys, the listeners, appreciate the fact that it's just not a one and done answer. Right. There is no crystal ball in fantasy football. If you look, if you thought it was like that, you'd be making millions of dollars betting the NFL picks right. and lines. And go try your best to, to make money betting the NFL. It's freaking hard because you don't know what's going to happen every week. And so that just parlays right over into the fantasy football. We don't know what's going to happen. So that's why the three of us like doing this. We get here, we go back and forth. We sometimes we agree completely, and sometimes we disagree completely but most of the time we're in the middle and somebody has hey well I like this and I don't like that and I like this and as you you hear our conversations come to life on a player and by the end of it somebody might have changed their mind sure you know so or at least start leaning in one direction or another well let's see we're just trying to fill you with all the ammunition you need to make an educated decision on your own we're going to tell you everything we know everything we see we're going to tell you what the stats and the facts are we're going to tell you what our opinion is we're not just going to be like oh yeah well you got to go get Phil Clunzy (laughs) <laughs> well, let's see if we can change some opinions on <laughs> Philip Lindsay here. We'll start in the same order. Jay Wayne, you first. You got to go get Philip Lindsay. First round pick, Philip Lindsay. I know I said, <laughs> you know, that's why I addressed it at some point here. I just want to be that show that's like, oh, well, this is, you listen to something. It's like third round pick all day for that guy. Third round pick. Yeah, third round pick. Well, these guys that we're talking about here have earned this question. Sure. Like, you don't just go throw around first-round picks for anybody, Mm-mm. and you don't just expect to get that trade accepted if you throw around a first. If you throw a first-round pick at the Zeke Elliott owner, he's going to laugh at you in the face. Yeah. You know. If, yeah. Zeke had a bad week. You throw a first rounder over there. It's getting either first of all rejected quickly with a laugh at, or he's going to let it hang in. Right. Hang up there for two weeks out of disrespect we, for your disrespect. We've talked about it on this show. I've seen other people talk about it. If you throw out a trade and it does doesn't make you sweaty or your butthole pucker up <laughs> that just means you're an asshole and you know you're clearly winning that trade there's like, nothing re- there's nothing wrong with starting it off I, I there's nothing wrong with being an asshole i'm not saying yeah. that there isn't that you should just be throwing your best and final offer up there right away if you've listened to us for any amount of time i like it's a slow build so slow okay. Okay. figuring it out and i don't mind if you okay. get upset about that trade but when it's really comes down to brass taxes of what you because if it, Everyone values players differently, and sometimes right. that trade that gets laughed at by 11 out of 12 players, the 12th player does it. But for the most part, when you really have to get down to it, that final trade that you're sending out, you get the yeah. tight butthole or the sweaty palms, if you or send, you're like, if should you, I send this? And then you send it, and you're like, should I take it down? Right. If, right. You, send <laughs> Phillip, if you send Philip Lindsay in a first for Todd Gurley, you wasted somebody's time. You got them excited to see the trade come in, and then they see it, and they're like, I don't even want to talk to you right now. We might not be friends anymore. So first round pick for for Philip Lindsay, where you at? Uh, Jay Wayne. So you want to give me a running back that's about to give me 15 or more points every week <laughs> for a first round pick? I'll take the running back. Let me get that running back. Survey says. Let me get that running back. Ding, ding, Let ding, me get ding, the running ding, back. Ding, 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 ding. Second then, most popular answer, t- 20 out of 100 said. <laughs> I don't know. Right, right. I'm not as good as Steve Harvey as, no. as he crushes it for sure. Uh, and then, I mean, if you want to look at him actually play the game of football, it's very impressive to me. Just I, how's he doing? What he's doing? It just look. It looks so good. He's just so physical. He's not the biggest dude ever. But then you and go. That look would at be his, the initial. That's the hate. If you're sizest, then. Do you don't like it? And a draft capitalist. He's not the guy for you. Undrafted. No draft capital. But I would say if you're a draft capitalist. Five, eight, one ninety. If you're a draft capitalist, then the way they're using him should make you feel even better about if you're a draft capitalist. I mean, the usage out of this guy should make you feel like, mm, well, I'm a draft capitalist, but I'm all, if you're a draft capitalist, you have to be a usage capitalist as right. well, right? I mean, well, I mean, right. That's your angle. Right. 
is they got the capital, <laughs> right? He's, and you're going to get the usage. He's at got the usage the tri- right tri- now. The tries, yeah, with right. or without Royce Freeman. I looked at this cat's college game log, and this is is out of control. Like this last season or last year in 2017, he ran the ball 301 times, averaged 4.9 a carry for 1474 yards, added another 23 receptions for 257 yards. There's let's see, one, two, three. Four games where he had 18 or 19 carries. Every other game over that is is 20 or more. There was a 41 carry game. This dude was a workhorse for Colorado. I didn't know that. Right, uh, that and mistake on my part. Here. Not not <laughs> even not even like the fantasy players or the other people who are and and, and professional talent evaluators. I'm sure disregarded this guy because he was 5'9", 190. Didn't get invited to the combine as if you've watched any Broncos game with Mark Schlereth calling it. He'll say it a million times how it's a crying shame this guy didn't get invited to the combine. All that and above. And to me, it just goes back to like people like if this guy didn't fall into the right situation or, or he wasn't from Colorado and there wasn't people in Colorado right, checking him out right. that like he probably falls through the cracks and maybe he doesn't even end up playing NFL football. Well, like, and this is just to goes back to like, it's all about situation coaching and, and all of that kind of stuff to get you into the right, uh, place and time to be the guy that you are right now. Like he could have easily maybe went somewhere and just been, pushed to the back of the line and but the Broncos gave him a chance he's the guy he's been in Colorado like the in-house scouts figured this out he could have gone elsewhere as an unrestricted free agent you can sign wherever you want he wanted to stay and play in Denver he's he's from there and that's what he wanted to do so they had an edge based on him having preference there um he's he's a he's a guy who knows his history he actually hit up Terrell Davis Davis, asking him he's a Colorado native if he could get his jersey number like what a class move there! Like he, so he. I mean, you got to go a little. It was twenty years ago. Terrell Davis won the MVP of the in the National Football League. Like that doesn't seem like twenty years ago. I remember that. That was doesn't seem that long ago. I'm, That's crazy. We're getting old here. So old. But for him, he, he's so like I just. To me, Phil Lindsay has that it factor. He's just so oh, grimy. Phil Sims, Phil Sims doesn't like when you say somebody has an it factor. He's he's just so determined. Nobody he's likes not going to be denied. So. Yeah, who's Phil Sims? Nobody nah, likes I know that who guy. Phil Sims is, yeah, he just he won't be denied. He's just out there. He doesn't he doesn't give a fuck. He's about to get it done for you and your team, and he's about to put it all on the line for his team. I know he got thrown out of the one game. Went back and watched that. It was kind of a bogus play. He didn't throw a punch. He was trying to get a ball loose and it was a late it was a late play the play was over he shouldn't have done it he learned from it and it was borderline whether they should have thrown him out or not but they did uh it's not as bad as like oh he threw a punch i mean it looked sounds way worse than it was Eh, i'm okay with the punch anyway (laughs) sure whatever yeah you don't know what the other guys are saying or doing (laughs) you got to defend yourself he's five seven uh so small man's complex there but he doesn't play small i mean he's i'm just so impressed that not just the ppr floor but the the between the tackles running and and i love the way they're using him i mean the broncos aren't crushing it this year but just there's a lot of counters and a lot of little little misdirection here or there he gives you one step one way and then he's off in the next direction and and the bill musgraves in this offensive line larry was a big blow to this line but i like this line coming in and their their run offense has been pretty solid all year round the pass protection eh, but been a been a been a good offensive line and, and i like bill musgraves and so you you put that and you combine it with his decision making his his he's so fast and the burst is incredible he's from zero to sixty in a flash and he's he, between the tackleness for how big he is is great I know seventeen red zone touches and just the ferocity that he plays with now this past Sunday he did get walloped he got just pop you're, you're gonna have to take some of those it's gonna happen but it, it didn't phase him like he just seems like a guy who's just about to persevere. And I just feel like, and, and the numbers are there to back it. The usage is there to back it, with or without uh, Royce, Freeman. Royce Freeman. Right. So I, I was ready to give a first up for a couple of weeks now. I didn't offer it. I know you got him in one league, Casey, and I've been thinking about trying to get him from you. And I'm thinking like, ah, it's been too late. I waited too long. I waited too long. But like, I'd still, I'd give you the first round pick. You to taking get him. that? Um, I don't know. I'm- <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, All right. I don't think so just because of the way my team's built in that league 
Um, I I like that team. I you like a it a lot. Backs, I got a bunch. I got a bunch of depth. I got a pl- bunch there's of other running, running backs, backs that I would prefer to sell before I would sell him. They're okay. probably not worth first. Yeah, but I would rather get some twos and maybe just hang on to Lindsay and see what happens. Um, obviously in that league, I got guys coming back. I got Sony Michelle who's out right now. I also have Zeke, which you would think for the next couple of years, I got a solid trio with Mark Ingram being the, the odd man out possibly. Um, then that's not even adding Lindsay and Brita and Crowell and, and all those fun type of guys that might be able to fetch, fetch me some return here. So I don't necessarily know in that league, if I would be, sending them off for a one. I don't even know if I'm sending them off at all at this point for a one. There was a point in time where I was like, oh, a two would be real nice, but I'm going to sit on them for a little longer because I bought them with all my fab budget. Like I'm So I, there was a point in time where I was like, if I bought this guy with all my fab budget and I could sell him for a two, great, what a return on investment. But as it's gone on and as I've watched him more and more and you know, when you see the size at first, you're like, eh, but I'm multiple documents on here as I'm not a sizist. I don't give right. a shit how big you are and what uh, it's it's about you can you play the position and i think he can play the position and again they have draft capital tied up in royce freeman but this guy's been out there doing his thing and they clearly like him more than royce freeman everyone's like give royce freeman more run and I, i've been in that camp somewhat but this guy's out here doing his thing there's no reason to, to take him off the field and to give him any less touches so i guess short form of the answer here is is no i would probably hang on and 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 uh and keep Lindsay for another year and just just see what happens i mean obviously Dang royce it. freeman's not going anywhere <laughs> i'm had phil Lindsay. it does give me some pause i'm like maybe i should cash in on this i know i know we're well i don't think jay wayne's team's doing too great in that league if no, i'm, I'm uh-huh. ready to roll here you ready to roll yeah just picked up a big dub this past week. <laughs> I'm big dub. What's your record? Uh, I think it's five, five four, four, five, four, five, three. Okay. It's, okay. it's a sixth place total points gets in the playoffs in that league. So, Ooh. um, my record's not great right now, but my points are 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 pretty decent. Uh, so you're probably going to have a top six pick by missing the playoffs because well, the record's not good. But my had record's some bad not luck. good. But I could if I if I if if I can get right. And get all my guys on the field at the same time. Sure, I'm uh, sixty points maybe outside of the sixth place, and those those next couple of guys aren't aren't that far apart. So I'm just no, I'm really a on a big team. sliding I'm, scale. You got a really good team. There's no I'm doubt about four it. and four in fifth place right now. All right, all right. I'm, I don't think I'm too far behind points wise on Jay Wayne. So although I didn't have a great week this week, and I haven't okay. looked at it. Just what you know. Just wanted to see if you got. Yeah, just, I'm only like 20 more points. Than you know you, your so. league. If that that guy's got a chance to maybe yeah. compete for that number one one, that gives you one more shot at it. Sure, and uh, that's another reason, another factor of why it would give me a little bit of pause. But I think and for if, now, and I think, if you don't make the playoffs, maybe Philip Lindsay helps you earn the one one. Right. I think I'm. I think I'm holding holding the Lindsay right now. And for anybody that is not familiar with what we're talking about, is if the. If you've got a 12-man league and the best six teams make the playoffs, the set the bottom six teams, they have a bracket of their own, and they the winner of that in this bracket particular league. in this league gets the 1-1, one, one, and you go backwards from there. Some Most traditional leagues, the bottom six that don't make the playoffs, they go in reverse order from worst to first for getting draft picks. This league plays for the and first. And this league plays for the first round pick, for the 1-1. One, one. With, so with the sixth overall player, regardless of record, Total points gets in. Okay. Um, so, but it, that's that's just one particular example. So you have to be in fifth place with your record. Right. Okay. To be safe. Yeah. And that that's just a way to make it exciting for this league. That was just one of those. So that, this league option. is a little different in that. in that. So it does give me a little bit more pause of trading the Lindsay or getting the one or anything like that. Uh, but just some extra I've, strategy. I've been there. leaning a little bit more towards maybe I'm going to hang on to Lindsay. I know that you can get here standing with the with the bag in your hand. Like I know you've been, we talked about it beforehand. And what what really burned you up is a couple of years ago you got left standing with Lacey and Hill in your hand. And you you know, obviously this guy is nowhere near on the level where those two were even starting out. But right now, he's he's looking he's looking really solid. I like everything I've seen from him, and I'm um. If I was in, if I needed a running back, I would for sure be giving up a one to try to get this guy. And uh, I don't, I'm not sure I'm, I'm not sure I'm letting him go for anything but a, a, a surefire like top five 
or better player because it's just like we've been talking about the top five better draft better draft pick, pick okay. because I, I look at this year like who are you outside of those first Chubb just got relevant for you and a lot of people maybe even had him slated as the sixth best player but he could easily like you could be drafting your penny or you could be drafting your rojo or you could be i mean sony michelle didn't help you out for a while like darius geis isn't doing anything for you i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with those guys a lot of those receivers aren't really in your lineup i like what dj moore's doing i like what i see from christian kirk um I like Calvin, Calvin Ridley. Ridley. Like I like all those guys, but I mean, right now they're not replacing my running back uh, points points week in week yeah. out. And I, you know, maybe I don't see any reason why Lindsey can't continue to do what he's doing and and give me that twelve to to sixteen point threshold. If not, maybe a little bit more. If this team got a little bit better, let's not forget the quarterback play isn't outstanding right now. Sure. Well, even you mentioned the rookie running backs that you go through, and let's just talk about the complete league of running backs and points per game. There's the guys at the top, which is the ones we were chasing to begin the season. Um, you know, those top end, they Todd Gurley, thirty points a game. Melvin Gordon, Kamara, both at 25, 20, 26, 27. James Conner and Saquon are holding it down at twenty fives. Obviously, that 25 was supposed to be Le'Veon Bells. Then you, James White sneaks in there with 21. Kareem Hunt, Christian McCaffrey, Joe Mixon. We knew those guys were going to be good. Ezekiel Elliott. So that rounds out the top 10. James White jumped into top 10. James Conner snuck into top 10 with Le'Veon Bell being on eight straight bye weeks. And then you start out. Then TJ Yeldon's in there with the injury to the Jags deep offense. There's Tariq Cohen. There's old man don't give up Adrian Peterson. Marlon Mack shows up at 15 points a game. And then you got Kenyon Drake. Geo had a couple games without Joe Mixon at 13 points a game. And there's Philip Lindsay right there at 13.5, but was kicked out early in one game for this so-called punch. Mm-hmm. So like you said, give him a normal game and maybe Philip Lindsay's averaging 18 well, points let's a game. Just say you give him 10 more points on average and he ends up with 12. Cause that's about what he's doing. Okay. So that's going to be, t- he's 15 points a game. That would make him a back end, a high end RB two, like the highest RB twos. Right there with A B A Adrian Peterson and the underperforming bad offense, David Johnson. Who doesn't need a high end RB two right now? Who doesn't need a fifteen point a game guy? Which is the way a the way that Jay Wayne started it. He said, If you want to give me a guy that's gonna get fifteen points a game, my running back spot, I'll take it. I'm a good summarizer. So <laughs> I'll end my my point of saying that I don't think I'm giving up the one. I think I'm holding Lindsay for the most part. And and I'll kick it to you and ask you the same question. Well, like you like you said, and I'll unsummarize and make it really long. Just kidding. I'll keep it short. <laughs> no, you I won't. did. I had Just kidding. <laughs> couple, I had Eddie Lacy and I had Jeremy Hill on the oh, same dynasty here team. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> he just brought it up. I'm going to expound upon it. I had these two guys on the same dynasty team. It was Jeremy Hill's rookie year. I got him for a dollar, right? Had Eddie Lacy paid up for him because that was actually the startup year too. So Eddie Lacy crushes. And Jeremy Hill comes on out of nowhere. It, but, I mean, he was an SEC power back and saw nobody be able to tackle him, so I liked him. And then boys crushed. Going into the next year, I had two of the top five dynasty running backs on my team. Couldn't have been happier. By the end of the year, Jeremy Hill was nowhere to be seen. And Eddie Lacy was, had been gone. He had disappeared, and he was coming back around, and he was had a By couple of plays. disappeared, he doubled in size. <laughs> He took a, you had to zoom out. Bad jokes are funny. You had to zoom out because it was blurry when it was too close. <laughs> so I got I got left over the over the next year, I got left holding the bag on two guys that were supposed to be awesome and they were awesome and then they weren't awesome anymore. And so sell the first year running back that's good? If you can What's, get uh, I, I yeah. What? If you can get something really good for him, I'll sell anybody this if I get a fair offer. Why didn't and you sell I will Alvin hold Kamara. still for that, huh? Why didn't you sell Alvin Kamara or Kareem Hunt? I did. I just sold Alvin Kamara. Well, sure. This for year, Todd Gurley. This year, right? But last year, with the same examples that you're giving, of saying sell, sell, well, just for on what Jay, I'm just well, saying what Jay Wayne the, said. First of all, both of those guys I drafted in the first round of rookie drafts, and Philip Lindsay came off the fab, like you said, because even in rookie drafts, nobody even knew who Philip Lindsay was. He just appeared out of thin air week one. And if you think he didn't, we he, he was there in the preseason. He okay, was, that's he, fair, fair he enough. Well, in the preseason, he he was there in the preseason. We, but Casey brought him up, said, "I think this guy could be a pretty solid space back." He, I he gave him the sa- I said I didn't think he would be an every down player, but I think he could be a really really good satellite back. This is true. I remember Long that. on that front, 
right. Well, he is a good satellite back. Turns out he can also run it between the tackles. <laughs> right. right. Which exactly. is a quality that Eddie Lacy and Jeremy Hill never had, that satellite back capability of the PPR floor. Those True. boys didn't have that. No, they didn't. Well, neither one of them were anywhere close to 188 pounds soaking wet either. But I completely agree that Philip Lindsay looks he's so he's fun to watch and he's quick to hit the hole and to be 188 190 pounds he's like you said he's not scared to hit it Mm-mm. he can get the edge he's he, he's a lot of fun to watch actually because he will plow right through the tackles and he looks smart running through those holes he looks like a he's got very good vision to run yeah. the ball like you said Agreed. i had no idea he had 300 carries in one season in college boom he can get the edge and he can catch it a little bit. And he can sustain so, workhorse ability. Whoa. He has Not 300 that carries that. in he has 300 carries in college. Not at that a he's going to get that. small college. And there is Royce Freeman still It here. wasn't small college. He played at Colorado. Well, they have boys play middle schools. <laughs> no, they but, don't. <laughs> but to this point in the season, Utah, he's been Southern one of the California, best. Arizona State, uh, Washington the boys, State. The, the boys are the boys are real real teams. Washington, right. it's a good conference, decent conference. Oregon State. So I take that back. They don't play middle school. See, he uh, he's he's had been, forty-one he's been, carries versus Arizona. He's been absolutely likes out as an NFL running back, and I can't take nothing away from him. Um, I did sell him earlier this year. I bought him off off the waiver wire like Casey said he did and I sold him and I couldn't have been happier about it. I Just because I hit on my trade and I zeroed in on my guy and I got who I wanted. But Bobby Woods. Correct. Solid trade. Yeah. Not so, mad at that. So that said I mean the guy I picked up I'm in love with and his value has gone up since then. Let's but take even Eddie Lacy and Jeremy him, Hill out of the equation. But since I sold him he He's gone on to continue what he did in for, in week one of the season and surpassed it. And I I got nothing bad to say about Philip Lindsay right here. He's he's so you're giving up the first. Take Eddie Lacy and Jeremy Hill out of the equation. Just let's just poof like they're gone. Like they really did disappear. The problem with me giving a first for Philip Lindsay is they do have Royce Freeman and they haven't gotten into any real legit cold weather games yet. Not that that's going to mean Philip Lindsay don't play football. He's from Colorado. And Royce, or I'm, but I'm Oregon, saying like so. turn to the run some. I mean, get this. Yeah, he got 18 carries last game, but he's 190 pounds. What's that mean? It means he's not built to what's, take. What's the, that have to do with the cold? He's, he's means he's from not Colorado. 220 pounds. He's had 40 carries in a game. Oh, you're in reaching Colorado. Big cold. Yeah, that's cold? A, that's you're reaching a for the cold? That's a reach. No, it's not. Yeah, it happens every year in the NFL. Everybody says that. Oh well, when it gets into cold weather, they got to lead a little bit more on the run. That's yeah. what happens. I, I'm not saying that they. That's not don't. a reach. That's, that's actually kind of what you say every single that, year. That's that, wouldn't fine. that help him then? That's that's fine. I'm just the guy is from. It's not like he's just like. Some guy who came from a hot climate and now is in a cold climate, and when it gets cold and they have to lean on him, what's gonna like? He's from Colorado. He knows how to deal that ain't with the what cold. I was, that's not what I meant. I about think he's the whole meaning team, more they're gonna be about lean on the Royce team and what they. I think a little bit more Royce. And at the, right now that they just gave away Demarius Thomas, which is good and bad because I think that might mean a little bit, a couple more catches for him, which would be fantastic for his PPR value. I, I, I understand that, but also. The team, like obviously, the the Broncos offense is underperformed. The Case Keenan project the quarterback is underperformed. The case, okay, but if the quarterback running under, backs have overperformed, Philip Lindsay's overperformed. I wouldn't say that that Royce Freeman's the combination of the two. I think Royce Freeman's Royce has been good. Awesome, and Philip Lindsay, Philip Lindsay's been electric. I don't, I don't know that it gets. I don't know that it keeps going. I don't, I don't know if it gets any better than this. Now. Maybe they get a quarterback and it gets better than this. Maybe they get a quarterback that's actually doing better, you know, getting the ball to the receivers, not name Emmanuel Sanders. And maybe there's not quite as much work for Philip Lindsay. But right now, he's exactly what his team needs. And it wouldn't, it, yes, he's, I, it wouldn't surprise me if he continues to get 15, 20 points a game, which is worth a first round pick. I know Royce is there. To back up the point, regardless of Royce's, he was putting up numbers with Royce in there. Yeah, he was. Got elevated a little bit without him in there. But, I mean, this is dynasty, and you see a guy, and you evaluate him based on his talent and how he looks on the field. I understand opportunity, and I understand scheme and all that. But, man, when I see someone that's that talented and is that ferocious and good at what he does when he's doing it, let me get him on my team. And if I got Royce in there that's going to muddy things up, I understand, but 
I got I got I got to get that. I think Royce on my is, team. is a really good player, and I was. I agree. I'm well, one of the guys who thinks Royce should should get some more carries. But how can you give him more carries when the guy in front of you is doing what he's running hot? Philip Lindsay's Phillip doing. Philip Lindsay's running hot, but I mean they're both rookies. Neither one of them's going anywhere. Still not sure of what the cold weather thing had to do with anything. <laughs> you know, I didn't say he <laughs> wasn't from Colorado. These are not the droids you're looking for. If he get if there's more running plays, that's better for him, right? Not necessarily. Why? Because you're not th- you're, you're not threatening back. with the pass. Don't look at me like you you don't know what I'm talking. No, about. No, I don't. But if if you still you got this grin e- on your every, face like I said something retarded. If it's cold and everyone's going to the run, then everyone's going to the run. No, Bo. When it's cold and everything gets tighter, you got to be able to play in tighter spaces. Right now, when it's nice and warm and not even just a little bit chilly, that would be ideal for you're airing Lindsay it to out. Play and now the defense spaces. is kind of there spread out. There's nothing being aired out in that Broncos offense. Well, there's threats at least. I'm saying when it's cold and everything gets a little tighter and everybody gets a little bit more compressed on the field, then it's not going to be quite as easy. And that's when you get a little bit more knockdown drag out. And I don't know if he, it might be a little bit more Royce Freeman time. I mean, maybe, but that's, that's like saying that if I'm from the North, I didn't say nothing about him, you, him being well, from the I'm, North. I'm, I'm just talking saying about that, that's like that, the way football teams are. This is a cold. You're saying that because it's getting colder and things are getting tighter. Colder, bad weather, snow, right. wind, winter. You act like every it, year we don't talk about the fact that teams lean on the run. It was when already it gets it's, in December. It snowed in one of their games already, and he was great. That was a warm weather snow. Uh, it has to be cold enough to snow. <laughs> <laughs> snow, like snow comes down in the That's broad like in, if, in the if, bright sun. If out. If you went to Colorado in the winter time, it would be like, oh yeah, Big Co might struggle in the winter. <laughs> if I'm from Pennsylvania and I go to Colorado in the winter time, I don't struggle in the cold. I didn't say Philip Lindsay was going to struggle in the cold. I said the entire pass offense comes down a little bit in the cold, therefore hurting the running game. Mm, I'm not buying reach. it. Okay. All right. Well, we'll revisit. Reach. We will revisit. You guys act like you never watched football before. I, I'm not, <laughs> no, no, no. There's a bigger reach. Yeah, I watched plenty. Obviously, of football. I I know that when it gets cold and you're getting the playoffs, you need a run game. They have a run game, and he is he's a big part of that. Right, he is the run game. He's doing well. I didn't say he was. All right, so we like him. I didn't say I didn't like him. Jesus. Well, so you're not giving, but you're not giving up a first round pick for him. And situationally. What would the situation be? This is the uh, first time I've even heard situationally. So right, because before we started, if you're going to give me a first, the, I'm it was chipping them out. It was all day. All day. So we're, we're chipping away We're at chipping it. away. Chipping away at me. We're, we're chipping away. <laughs> we're breaking down barriers. Chipping away. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the last two chips have been nice without Royce Freeman. And, I, and I, this was the I when I when we were talking about this, leading it off, I, I said the same thing you did to lead it off. Of course, I'm not giving you the 1-1. If I'm 0-8, I'm not going to. Lindsay, I'm not giving Lindsay for that. Fair like, enough. A lot of these guys, I think, are based on the lower, the mid to lower end of the first round. Yeah. Uh, with the exception of maybe one or two guys for each of us going the other way. I got, I got the 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 tight end league that we got. Um, I'd probably look at giving you. I, I have a really good shot at making the playoffs. I think I'm six and one, or maybe six and two, with second most total points. And I got a boatload of receivers. I only need to start two running backs each week because of the way it happened, the way it played out. Tons of receivers, decent tight ends, and I got David Johnson, James White, and Eckler. Real, literally the only three. And so I probably would be looking at adding to. I, I probably could give you that first rounder for Philip Lindsay if I had taken a week or two and tried my best to do something better with it and I got shot down. And I, again, which I, I actually that's in that league I haven't ever I haven't sent out my first round pick for anybody. I just got so many leagues that one kind of gets kicked to the side. We but, talked about uh Penny uh Rashad Penny last week and how somebody wanted to trade him and then you know you Big Co was saying yes trade him because now I'll have two first round picks. And, you know, I like having two first round picks. So, like, I can understand why you're saying that you would sell him. That That's uh, essentially your logic of saying that you would sell him for a first penny or uh, sorry, uh, Lindsay for the first round pick coming into this thing. That was your logic of saying, yeah, let me ship him off for the first round pick because I know I can take these two ones and, and for sure go get a more surefire running back or player, I guess, is is 
was essentially before we started, that was your position. Yeah. And, and I get it. I understand that point. But I'll bring up the same point that I brought up last week is that it doesn't always work that way. You can't always take the two ones and turn them into this sh- surefire player. No. It's great in the theory. And I understand the theory 100%. But it, it just it doesn't always work out that way. And then while we were talking about it again off air, you said... You know, I'll turn into a surefire player that I know what I'm going to get out of for the next three years. I don't know what I'm getting out of Lindsay. And my response was, is like, you know, we've made trades for other players. Like we've traded for Le'Veon Bell. Certainly didn't see this. coming. <laughs> yeah, that didn't you work know, out. You traded for Ezekiel. Elliott, and although it's been good, you certainly didn't know that his center was going to get an autoimmune disease. You certainly didn't know that they weren't going to have any uh, wide receivers that were any sort of a threat before Amari Cooper came to town. Sure. Uh, so, to you know, to. I understand the theory of saying like you like the safer player of saying I like this three year window of knowing what I'm getting like you almost really never 100 percent know what you're getting like. Do I like Melvin Gordon right now? Love Melvin Gordon right now. If Melvin Gordon goes somewhere that's not as great as the Chargers next year. Do I love Melvin Gordon as much? I still like the player. Not sure I love the situation as much as what's going on in, in L.A. And he could he's got to does have a bad knee and maybe the knee goes out like Jay Ajay two years ago. He was a huge pick. Everyone loved Jay Ajay out right now with that rickety knee finally reared its ugly head and he still wasn't great this year. So like the out, the long-term outlook is never a hundred percent what you think it is. David Johnson this year. Did, did you know that that it was going to be as bad as it was not like it's terrible like you're not upset that you're starting david johnson week in week out but it's not oh i've definitely been upset it's not the 25 points a game that you thought you were getting he's still in my lineup but i'm definitely not it's not what i was signing up for right definitely not what i was signing up for no you're right i mean you could try to get but in each of those in each of those i mean we traded for Le'Veon bell we traded for uh, ezekiel elliott we traded for jarek mckinnon look at that work yeah we, Devon, dante freeman yeah you don't know and but just jordan howard Sure. Uh, you, if, you, if you said prior to this season, if a guy like Lindsey popped up and you were like, I could trade Lindsey for Jordan Howard prior to what's going on right now in Chicago, you'd probably be like, give me Jordan Howard. Yeah. But right now, situationally, give me Lindsey. Give me Lindsey. Right. Yeah. That's the NFL. That's why, uh, that's why they keep us coming back. Right. Each and every week. Which we hope you do. <laughs> As the listeners, we appreciate all you guys. I think we got to get the FF out of here. Mm-hmm. All right. right, we are the FF Dynasty. You can hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty, at Dynasty Big Co, at IMC Myers, at Jay Wayne's World. It's been a fun discussion. We wanted to get into some more. We're going to take the rest of that Marlon Mack discussion, as pr- previously mentioned, over to Patreon, as well as maybe talk about some of the trades that went down this week in the Plus, NFL. Oh, all the trade talk Golden Tate, Alshon Jeffrey, how uh, Ty Montgomery's faring with all this, and how. Time or uh, Golden Tate affects the whole Eagles staff. How what Demarius Thomas does uh, for the Texans, Cortland Sutton and his outlook, all that stuff's going over to Patreon. Uh, and we're there's plenty of there's I think 29 questions lined up for the show of Patreon. We got some great uh, questions for our week eight or week nine or whatever it is topics. We probably won't get to all those. There's no way, um, but. <laughs> There's that's, no way we get to all that. That's just what's on the docket. That's what's on the docket. Sure. Oh, you know, maybe we don't record into all those, but we've texted. We'll text. We've we've typed answers into half of them already, just for the ones that sounded like they were urgent. Right. Um, try to try to take care of the family over there. Absolutely. Which, if you want to join the fam, you haven't decided to do so yet. You want to this week? Head over to our website, theffdynasty.com. There's a link straight to there on our homepage. Over to Patreon. You can also get there from patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Uh, give us that $5 holler. You get an extra hour plus of content every week. We do the after show. We do the pleasure chest. We're answering tons of questions. You get access to the community page. Uh, we're doing a Sunday sit start live Q&A. Uh, well, no, it's not a live Q&A. We're answering uh, sit start questions uh, where anybody on Patreon gets priority. Essentially is live. There's a YouTube chat that you can and then, respond in. right so if you so if you're not a page <laughs> live as member, it gets right unless <laughs> no, you're in we, front of me it says go live click <laughs> button to go live if you're uh if you're not a patreon member and you want to get some more access definitely head over to youtube hit subscribe there we got uh, videos going up each week you'll get notified of that and then you also get a notification when we go live on sunday mornings and then you can get your sit start questions answered there after we get through answering all the Patreon members' uh, questions. Make sure you hit that little bell notification button on YouTube to get immediate 
uh, notifications. Yeah. Make sure you go to Taco Bell for your free taco. Right. <laughs> for the stolen bases. Please, if you're uh, on iTunes, <laughs> hit us with that five star review. That would be top notch of you. Just so nice. Cheerio. Uh, with all that being said, let's get out of here. Thanks for listening, everybody. This has been the FF Dynasties Married to the Game. Peace.